Saudi Arabia, Shia, number one, and super Sufis. And those who hate Quran and Sunnah. Because imagine me, Sheikh Hassan, if I want to be extremely rich, can I be using my deen, my religion? Wallahi, in less than a year, I can be a billionaire. If I sell my deen, if I make gatherings and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh, Prophet of Allah, our beloved Prophet, Sheikh, I divorced my wife three times in one. No problem. Don't, don't do it again. Huh? Yalla, bismillah. But, you know, I have a problem with payment of the house. And uh, Sheikh, this is a check, $100,000. Okay. And I can make money in no time. So, those making profit and money, like these people with the green uh, cover or green turban or green everything is green our flag by the way is always green and so those people are making money they look at Saudi Arabia at what Saudi Arabia represents and they talk against it because this way this they can bring more followers to them now Saudi allies itself with the West this is true our weapons come from USA we depend a lot on the technology coming from USA and from Europe because we don't have this. You in Malaysia did the same, but you managed to develop yourself. So you had a plan, taking the technology, trans transferring it and operating it afterwards. We failed in doing this 100% due to many reasons, but we still are dependent and we're trying to diversify. We want to be trying to go to other countries so that we're not dependent on America anymore, alhamdulillah. And this is making America very angry and very upset. Fourthly, our attack on Yemen is not based on interest in territory. Because if we wanted Yemen, we could have taken it 70, 80 years ago. We are the only country for the past 30 years giving and pumping money to Yemen. Do you know that the Yemeni airlines, planes are a gift from Saudi Airlines? All of it, all the hospitals, think Fahad Hospital, think Abdullah Hospital, they built it. They financed Yemen for the past 30 years because they are leaders. And that is it, no interest, no questions asked. But when the Rafida, when the Houthis, the Shia were controlling Yemen, killing their people, killing the Sunnis, slaughtering them, children, women, men, and wanting to dominate the whole country, there was one of two choices. Leave them and end up in two years or one year like Syria, and then you have Iran surrounding Saudi Arabia. Do you think they will give us a, 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 a postcard on Valentine Day. They are trying. They are fighting us. We our fight with Iran, with the, these Majus, with with this Shia, has been so long, and we are blaming Saudi Arabia. I am as a citizen blaming my government for being so soft with me. So now they come infiltrate east of uh, Saudi Arabia. They have done what they have done in in Bahrain. They're doing what they do in Kuwait, in Syria. They are killing in genocide of the Muslims, of the Sunnis. In Iraq, they're slaughtering all the Sunnis. And Yemen, we want us to wait. The Yemeni government, the legitimate elected Yemeni government, came to Saudi Arabia, begged Saudi Arabia to do something. Saudi Arabia called Muslim countries and made a coalition. And they agreed with an approval of the United uh, Arab, whatever they have this UN, but in Arabia, and they all started to target surgically places of the rebels, of the enemy. Okay, there might be mistakes and civilians die, but is it even close to what is happening in Syria? Is it close to the drone attacks of Americans over Yemen and Afghanistan, killing weddings and killing babies and children and women? And 
none of the Muslims spoke about it. Everything. Yeah, it's America. When America does this, we're afraid. So now, when Saudi Arabia is doing something legitimate and for the benefit of the Yemeni people, who talks against it? BBC makes a full hour report. Saudi Arabia, and CNN, and Fox uh, News, etc. And of course, Iran is feeding it. Hezbollah, you know, Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrullah, he is marking like crazy because of Saudi Arabia. So those who talk against Saudi Arabia, how many visits are there? What will you see? You will see a king. This human being is not a prophet, he's not a sheikh, he's not... He has his shortcomings. But a king that serves this country well, Muslims, Saudis, travel, unafraid. They pray five times a day in the masjid, unafraid. They know that there are tahfid al Quran circles, more than a hundred thousand in all of Saudi Arabia. We have the biggest print house of Quran to distribute in 70 languages free of charge. We have Dawah programs, we have universities teaching Islam. We send people, dua, da'is and scholars to spread the word of Islam. We help Islamic countries, we give to the extent that we as Saudi people are saying, hey, wait, wait, you're giving people, but we need money as well. We are condemning our government of giving everybody else, but we tell them, no, we want this money. To this, to this extent. So, when you come to Saudi Arabia, you will find that Islam is there. Scholars in Riyadh, in Jinta, in Mecca, in Medina, scholars, not guys, not like me, not real scholars. You haven't seen real scholars. Scholars that know Quran, the Sunnah, they write, they speak, they teach, they are like encyclopedia. Me, I'm not a scholar. If you should ask, I'm not a scholar. I'm a person who is a little bit old. Maybe this is uh, not real. And I have some knowledge, little knowledge, in English. And exposure in TV. That's why people think that, oh, mashallah, he's well known. I'm not a scholar. I have knowledge more than most of you. And I'm able to teach better than most of people because I'm a teacher by nature, alhamdulillah. But real scholars, you'll find them in the thousands in, in Saudi Arabia, mashallah. No other country has this. So don't be fooled by the propaganda that they're spreading against Saudi Arabia because we are not utopian when we are not companions of the Prophet but we are far, 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 far better than what they accuse us of.